Let's talk about the three most common allergies, okay? First one, the most common one is milk. And a true allergy involves a protein. So it's really the protein in milk, casein and whey protein. And that includes other dairy like cheese, ice cream, things like that. The primary symptom for a milk allergy is the skin. And secondary would be gut and then lung. So it can affect someone in different ways. All right, number two is shellfish. There's two types of shellfish. You have crustacean, which is shrimp, crab, lobster, and then you have mollusks, which is clam, oyster, mussels, and scallops. About 75% of allergies for shellfish involve crustaceans, okay? Usually one of these. And it can cross over, but it's usually one. Cooking it longer does not decrease the allergy. And there's also a hidden um, ingredient in the supplement glucosamine which can also trigger the allergy. So just be aware of that. Now, the third most popular allergy is peanuts. Now, peanuts are legumes, okay? And so um, they're seeds. And your body is actually allergic to that protein. Now, this next part is uh, interesting. The protein in milk and the protein in wheat are usually associated with a lot of autoimmune diseases. Why is that? because there's something called molecular mimicry. What is that? It means that the sequence of proteins in these will mimic the sequence of proteins in your myelin sheath, which is the outer uh, covering of the nerves that you have, and the islets of Langerhans, which are basically the cells in the pancreas that help you make insulin. And so the chemistry in these proteins mimic these. And so the antibodies can actually cross-react and start attacking your own tissue and create things like MS or type 1 diabetes. So what does that mean? It means that if you have an autoimmune disorder, <laughs> there's certain things that you need to avoid, definitely milk and wheat, and probably other common foods that people are allergic to. And I would actually just get tested and avoid any foods that you're allergic to. Probably the most important thing you can do to reduce the allergy and hopefully even eliminate the allergy is this thing right here, fasting. I did a video on it. I'll put a link down below. But fasting, especially periodic prolonged fasting, increases stem cells for your immune system. You can actually regrow a new immune system when you do fasting. Now, of course, vitamin D is going to be very, very important as well. But fasting is probably the most important thing you can do to actually get rid of allergies. There's so many people that I've got reports from that no longer have allergies because they implemented intermittent fasting and periodic prolonged fasting. Fasting doesn't just increase your stem cells. It decreases inflammation, but it increases your T cells which is a part of your immune system that is very important in reducing risk for autoimmunity and allergies itself. Because if you think about an allergy and an autoimmune disease, they're both allergies. This one, you're allergic to some external food or environmental um, particle. With this, you're allergic to your own tissues. Your body has antibodies that it's attacking its own tissues. All right. Thanks for watching. Before you go real quick, I have a course entitled How to Bulletproof Your Immune System. It's a free course. I want you to take it. And here's why. Here's you. Here is your environment. Everyone is focused on this over here, avoiding your environment. But what about here? What about strengthening your immune system. That's what's missing. This course will show you how to bulletproof yourself. And so you can tolerate and resist your environment much better by strengthening your own immune system. I put a link down in the description right down below. Check it out and get signed up today. Hey, before